Hello, hello, hello. Traditional and digital live stream. January 31st, 2023. Super early in the morning. It's 3 a.m. for me. I'm I'm used to getting up this early, but yeah, it feels a lot early this morning, I guess. A lot of trouble sleeping last night. But it's all good. I'll get through the day. Take a nap. But first, we're going to get some drawing done on this tiger painting. And we got a really good start with the background. There may be some adjustments that come, come in through that, you know, later on, possibly. I, li I really enjoy the, the, the blur that I put back there, this Gaussian blur, you know, utilizing the photographic techniques that many photographers take advantage of, um, that depth of field, the shallow depth of field that would blur things. You can see that it's happening here as well. This is a photograph of the Sumatran jungle. And if I zoom in pretty far, you can see that Depending on the distance, you know, this palm frond is more sharp than this one. And then looking way back into the jungle, it's very blurry back there. So we want to repeat that. And while I'm zoomed in, we're going to look at this tree here, which is, you know, is it a tree? It just looks like a bunch of moss and craziness there. That's what we're going to be working on today. And getting that figured out for the left side over here. This kind of dark area of the uh, forest or the jungle that is we're using as a compositional element to frame our tiger up. And that's going to be fun. The one thing that I was thinking about yesterday as I move this off screen I'm gonna have it on another monitor so I can kind of reference it there but one thing that I was thinking about uh, last night yesterday was something that Craig Mullins said Craig Mullins you know godfather of digital painting that's what they call him He's kind of, he started digital painting before Photoshop was even in its second, uh, version, I think. Good morning, my friend Thinker. Thank you for showing up again. Started it a bit earlier t today. Got, got a lot to get through today. Well, not in the live stream, but in life and work and all the other stuff that I do or try to do. But something that Craig Mullen said is that whenever let me make another layer, I keep sidetracking myself. Whenever you have a plane, and what what do I mean by a plane? Let me, let me illustrate really quickly. I'll do it in orange right here. So if you have an element that's curved has a curve to it let's zoom in chris so they can actually see what you're doing let's say this is a forehead you know maybe this is you know, the this leads down to the bridge of the nose you know so this is at an angle the eye is right here maybe the guy the person is sleeping or something here's their eyes but we have this forehead and what you'll have, what you'll see on a forehead of a figure is it'll usually have three planes. And what Craig Mullins says is anytime you have a plane, let's connect these, there should always be some kind of transition within that plane. So a gradient transition. So, um, you know, to quickly illustrate that, oh, big brush. So if we transition to a lighter color on one side, you know, it would have that kind of transition with inside of it. And of course, 
<clears throat> with if I made a selection out of that, I could have done that a, a, lot, a lot quicker and easier, but we're just, you know, for instruction's sake, there's that thing. Um, and then that gradient should have, you know, a value change, you know, from one side to the next. And it should also have a hue change, like a slight hue change. So if I want to go to like a more yellow tone, like a darker yellow, it should be on this side. So it goes from like an orange to a yellow. Not a hard and fast rule, but something to kind of think about. Like when you look at these palm fronts here, because I did a selection of them and we did a quick gradient on them and it really, you know, pulled out the form like instantly. And this is how we're going to start off with the top of these trees here. We're going to make a selection first. I'm going to hit S for my freeform selection tool. And there's actually two trees. So there's there's a separation that needs to happen here. So the, the and I'm going to focus on the one in the background first. But the separation is, is not going to be a um, straight one. It's not going to be a separation that is like a straight line. I'm looking at the reference image. And I'm really kind of making that up as I go. Because it's a tree. I mean, it's, it's based in randomness, you know. There's some authenticity that we need to grab there mainly we're just going to get that edge laid in and so what I can do after that let me get back to my uh, what you call it my airbrush and within the airbrush we're going to lighten up one side and we're gonna do it in two different ways. So I'll, I'll select this darker color and then I will lighten it up. I'll keep it kind of in the gray tones. Sorry if my internet is having some issues again. Not sure why, what causes that. And so I'm going to lighten up this side just a bit, like a grayish green. And then I'm going to take the hue all the way over to like this kind of blue color and we're going to shift it a bit. So we're going to darken it and shift the hue to a blue. Let's see how that looks. Let's go back to that green. Blend a little bit more. At any point in time, you can hit, um, what is it, like Shift H, Control H. So Control H will hide your selection. See how I can't draw outside of that? Because I'm still, I still have a selection there, but it's the, uh, the marching ants are hidden. So at any point in time, I could show or hide it. Yeah. And so I just wanted to separate that tree out a bit. And I'm, I'm actually going to bring our reference back up, which is, well, actually, no, that's so dark. I don't want it that dark. So I'm going to be just kind of going off the cuff today as far as these colors are concerned. Looking at the reference on a different monitor and just going for it. But the first thing I want to do is make a selection of this color that's back there when I selected everything. Let me get on that layer. There you go. That did like a whole selection of everything. So I can actually, nope. I can hold alt and pull out this area. 
All I did was I used this selection tool down here, which is called similar color selection. And if you're on the right layer, it will select everything that has that color in it. And then I can hit control H to hide that, but you have to really kind of remember like, Hey, I have a selection there. And then I can, let's make this a bit darker. Maybe let's cool it off just around in here. And I need a more subtle way of darkening this. We're going to go up to 16 values. It's probably the same value. I'm just darkening this up, providing this gradient with a hue shift that adjusts, looks like it adjusts the value. And we can kind of blend it a bit. So I'm not going to be using the, uh, the airbrush tool for much other than that, just providing that small shift. And then I'm going to go into with a textured brush. I'm going to try out a couple, a few textured brushes here to see what works well. A lot of experimentation that I do with, with um, the digital painting. And I think the, the main reason for that is, is, you know, I'm not a master at it yet. <laughs> Nowhere close, right? Actually, I still have that selection on, so I can hit Control H and it's there, but I'm actually going to remove it. And what I'm going to do instead is lock the transparency, which is just the same as a selection. Uh, this will, what this will do, if you do something like this where you're locking the transparency, uh, it's going to keep those hard edges because it's going to keep the selection that you have. I'm going to slowly work up some texture in this tree by just kind of barely changing some values first. Boy, that didn't even look like it made a change. You can't even tell the difference on those. Maybe a more much more value change. It looks like I'm, I'm going so dark. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty far into my limits of value range there that the only way to go from here is to go lighter right now to lighten up other things. Always something you have to be careful with is to compress your value range. Keep it compressed as long as you can. That way you have this extra kind of push that you can take your entire piece through. I mean, there's just so much texture on this tree. It's just crazy. But the one thing that I do notice is the general direction of the texture, which is vertical. Let's zoom out just a little bit. And as I look at this, I'm going to, I'm going to remove the uh, locking the transparency because I want to get rid of all these hard edges. And really bring in some of that texture on the edge of the tree. seeing like little twigs and stuff just kind of looks like they're sprouting out of the tree but probably coming from behind just adding in little bits of interest you know keeping it dark for right now we we can always lighten these things up
Let's change to this brush. This brush has really kind of a stripey kind of thing going on with it. See, the, see really the brush, the bristles of the brush in there. So that's going to be helpful for providing even more interest. Always gotta think about nature and how it doesn't follow any rules. You know, I'm, I'm doing all of this vertical kind of striping and then I'm like, you know what? Nature's gonna say, no, let's not do that anymore and put a big chunk of moss right there. So let's do that up here as well big chunk of moss just kind of hanging off the side over here. And this tree will also get some kind of blur to it as well, but not as much as the background. You know, kind of stepping down that depth of field a bit. So it leads into the background. There's a tendency, I mean, you know, I've done this for years where you create a painting and everything that you focus on is your painting because it takes time for each area as you're focusing but everything you focus on is in clear focus because we're looking at it you know makes sense but then uh, that's not the way our eyes work or especially the camera works you can really see it with you know cameras and stuff video cameras, you'll see the shallow depth of field and the blur that will happen with things in the background. Oh, you know what? I need to go back to that palette that we created, our tiger palette, right here. That's going to help me. Let's pull this darker color out, see where that's at. Oh yeah, adding some just slightly different tone in there, a little bit lighter. Let's go back to this brush for a bit. Oof, wow. Gotta be careful with this one. Don't press too hard. Believe it or not, I am looking at the tree in the background. Or the tree, the actual tree from the photograph. And trying to pull out some of this randomness into some structure that is understandable. Observation, that's what it really takes. 
overall, we want to keep it dark. We want to keep it um, as the kind of blocker that's there that keeps us into the center of interest. We don't want to add too much interest into this tree. Because that would pull the, the interest away from the tiger. Always thinking about what we're trying to accomplish in the larger scheme of things. just a little bit to this value in some places to provide some interest, but I need to be careful with it. Okay. That's looking okay. Again, I mean, this is, I mean, it looks kind of, well, it, these are things that shouldn't take a lot of interest away, honestly. I'm going to work on this stick at the very top. It's a very important compositional element. It just looks like a stick, but when you think about what it can do, which it's going to really help us keep the viewer's eye from going off the top of the canvas. It's going to be this little blocker that we use. Just provide some thickness to it, some a little bit of accuracy. And as I look at this stick from the jungle image, it just has, you know, all kinds of moss all over it. So let's jump into some lighter color. I'm 
I'm also going to be careful here as well because we are not getting people to focus on a stick. It's there to, to subliminally keep them looking at the tiger and in the tiger area. So I'm going to add probably too much and then I can just pull it away after I back up and look at it. Go a little bit too far and then just, you know, pull out the eraser kind of thing. This is one of those streams where I'm just drawing the whole time and not really <laughs> talking about a lot of things. Sorry about that. It comes to a point when, you know, you're drawing and painting where you just got to get to it, you know? Just put in the, the hours, the minutes, whatever you have. Just focus. Doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of a warmer yellow up here in some places. Or warmer green. It looks very yellow because uh, what I've been using is very cool colors. I kind of like that. Let's bring it a bit closer into the blues. That's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. The one thing I feel is that the background is a bit too dark, honestly, now that I look at it. And I need to do some separation here. So I'm gonna group these two, call it tree one. And this is going to be tree two. And with tree one, I want to put a, a blur filter on it. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. See, that's five. Well, let's just go with just five. I could probably do more on that, but 
one thing I want to do is lighten up that background a bit. And what is the best way to do that? Because we have a lot of texture in that background. And I have a gradient from, from the bottom to the top that's kind of darkening uh, the bottom up. Let's insert, actually, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna group these as well. Background jungle. So I'm gonna pull out another gradient, okay? And for this one, I'm gonna select this color. I'm going to warm it up just a little bit and then saturate it, but make it a little bit darker. Let's see what that does. Hmm. Let's do this a hundred percent opacity and then let's play with the opacity ourselves. Yeah, it really kind of, I like that it's lighter, but I don't like that it's kind of like this overall lightness. So shift delete to get rid of that layer. Probably the best route to take here. There we go. I'm gonna do control U within this layer and I can actually not control U, control L and we'll get levels. And with levels, you have to look over here on the uh, layer itself to see it loading. So bringing the highlight up just a little bit but I really want to bring up these mid-tones. That's too much. Hmm. <clears throat> and then create a filter mask. Wait for it to load and then see what it looks like when I turn it on and off. I honestly, I don't like it much that much. I'm trying to do something a bit quicker, but I honestly think that in order to lighten up all that in the background, we'd have to just get in there and start playing with more of the texture. Let's try this. I'm going to insert a layer and I'm going to change the, the opacity to it. And we're going to play around with some texture over all this. I'm going to get the general, uh, select the general value that's there that I want to adjust. And then I'm just going to lighten it up a bit. and kind of methodically pull out the places where I want those to be lighter.
bring it in a little bit more warmth up here, up here as well. like Rembrandt, you know, Rembrandt would do this kind of golden light on uh, his paintings. It was a very religious idea. You know, the, the golden light represented, you know, God in some way. It was pretty interesting. So a lot of golden kind of painting going on with Rembrandt. Which is beautiful. I mean, I love Rembrandt. I love his experimentation as well. His um, would you, how would you say it? His confidence, yeah, to just experiment. Like, let's just try anything. Yeah, what about ground up glass? Let's try grinding glass and putting it in my oil paint. Yeah. Oh, okay, that worked really well. That's true, he did that. And then I think a lot of other painters copied him. Of course, because, you know, that's what we do. I feel like I'm, I'm messing with stuff back there and not really making a good change. Yeah, I don't like any of those changes I did. Okay, let's just leave it like it is right now. Let's go back to that tree number one, which is actually gonna be including the tree on the left side as well. And we'll start working on that. I'm gonna change my reference here. This little small tree. So first we'll darken up this, the left side of it because the light is gonna be coming from the center. I'm envisioning like this shaft of light uh, that's coming down from the center somewhere. You know, maybe the jungle is obscuring everything but the light that is hitting the tiger. And then there's some bounced light off of that, that area that's happening. I love the idea of it because if, if you go to a museum or a gallery, especially museums, uh, National Gallery of Washington in Washington, D.C. is one of my most favorite galleries um, and how they have it laid out, very logical. But you'll walk through these halls, which are laid out in a chronological fashion. So you can start like it. 13th, 14th century art, and then work your way through time all the way up into, you know, 19th, 20th century and modern era. Well, the, the more contemporary works are in a different wing, but um, as you're going through, you, you can see how light changes and you can ask questions such as, when you're looking at certain paintings, you can ask a question like, where is the light coming from? And in some paintings, it's like the light is really just everywhere. It's coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. It's just there. It's kind of like what we're dealing with with 3D art now. They call it like the 
specular highlight or something like that. No, no, it's um, it's the light on the objects where there is no light. So it's kind of like they have this inner glow to the 3D objects. I need to bring this up in value just a little bit. So what you can do is you can use that. It's kind of, you know, eye opening in a lot of ways because you think, well, you have to paint the light that you see and how it is in reality. Well, no, not really. Um, you're skilled enough to, to know how light functions. You can kind of push, push it however you want, anywhere you want, uh, which is a lot of fun. And then you can use light to your advantage, you know, to figure out what would best, you know, describe your composition. Oof. So hard not to go full black on some of this. I'm looking at this tree and it has really cool vines all over it. It's kind of vines that are just flowing down from somewhere. I don't think I've ever been. Well, yeah, I have been in a a jungle, no, a rainforest. That's what I've been in before, is a rainforest. So it's in interesting, here in Washington, we have the um, Olympic Peninsula, which is, you know, big mountains, big peninsula. And on the peninsula, they have, like, so many different types they have like a rainforest and swamps and lakes and mountains and like you could be in several different temperate kind of climates over there it's really cool so i've been in that rainforest before the whole rainforest h-o oh hi forest thanks for the comment that tiger's so nice i appreciate that yeah, I can't wait to get till we get to the painting of the tiger. Eventually that'll happen. First we have to get this background figured out. Which I'm working on slowly. Oof, I'm I'm seeing these like uh, leaves or something kind of coming out here from this tree in the reference image. And I need a lighter color. Let's go with this one. Wow, way too light. Jeez. Okay, let's not go with that one. Let's try this one. That's okay. Let's warm it up just a bit. Darken it just a bit. Nope. Trying to keep that center of interest away from anything over here.
You know, it's funny. A lot of times when I'm drawing something, when you get with the, these subtle values, it's like nothing is happening. Like, I'm totally drawing something there, but I'm like, I, I don't see it. It's so subtle. And if I can't see it zoomed in, it's like no one's going to see this. So I need to pull out a different value or something. Okay. There's this little section that I can't paint over for some reason. I feel like I hit something on my keyboard. Okay. Black works. Maybe I was just, I've selected a color that's so perfect, perfectly matches something else that I can't see what I'm painting. Yeah, right there. But I can't go over that with black. What is going on? I am so confused. Dude. That was, that's so weird. I'm not sure why that was happening. Okay, I'll just merge those layers in a moment. I'm wasting a lot of time on that little leaf thing I'm trying to get in there. I think I'm going to hop on Krita and draw something too. Yes, please do. Jump in there, draw along. That's a great thing about digital software is, man, you can just get in there and start working like right away. Like don't even worry about what you're drawing, just Pick the first image you see or something you think about and just start drawing. Get that mileage in. Too often we sit there and we start kind of wabbling about thinking, oh, what am I going to draw? Maybe I should draw this. Well, no, no one's going to like that. Maybe I should draw this or that. No, don't worry about any of that. Just get drawing. Just have some fun. So I put all of that idea of what people are going to think or if it's going to turn out well or all that kind of stuff out of your head and just just start drawing that's that's where the, f the fun happens I'm gonna merge these two layers Yeah, I, I see that thinker. I apologize for this dream. Ooh, I wonder if I have something. Oh, Google. I didn't pause syncing on my Google. Darn it. Sorry, guys. That was all me. It should clear up in a moment. <laughs> Close to the end of the stream, it should clear up. I have to always remember to pause that because I have this like continuous backup going, which is important because I have a lot of stuff that I don't want to lose, but it will, the Google, any kind of upload with the internet I'm on will just kill my stream. Okay. 
That's looking pretty darn good. Sufficiently back there. We can always improve some interest in it if we want to. Let's move on to the second tree, this tree over here, which we have the gradient on. And we're gonna bring in some more interest with this tree, definitely. Needs, we need to darken it up a lot first. And let's do that with this guy. So I'm working up this image with the drawing over top of it. And I fear, one thing I fear is, you know, because you're working in these layers and you're adjusting things based on the combination of all those layers. So what happens when you turn off those layers? You get something completely different. So if I go up here and turn off the drawing, oh, it doesn't change that much for the background. That's good. That's good. That's what I was worried. Like you change it up and then all of a sudden the background looks completely different. All right, it does not. Oh, actually, the one thing I did notice as I was doing that, where's my stick? Is it here? No. Right here? No. Oh, it's in tree tree one. Right there. Okay. I didn't work on this area, this little smaller piece of a stick there. Y'all, you're drawing a dragon. That's awesome for us. Dragons are really cool. I don't think I've ever drawn a dragon. Oops, wrong layer. Gotta get back on the right layer. Maybe one day I'll draw a dragon. I think I would draw a dragon if I could get, you know, a figure involved into it. You know, someone riding that dragon or whatever. So this tree is actually really dark. It's just, um covered in lighter moss and leaves.
Okay, the trick in drawing sticks and branches. Observe where it's straight and observe where it's curved because it's not all curved and it's not all straight. Well, I guess the real trick there is just really observing. I know you've seen paintings of trees and sometimes you look at them and then, well, that looks like just kind of a wobbly looking tree. You know, it's just too curvy. And there's a tendency for artists to not observe the drawing of those limbs and those branches and do a bunch of curved lines. Don't do that. Try to really see what that tree is doing. Yeah, that's why, that's why I would say dragons are really hard to paint or anything like that where it comes right out of your head. I mean, you really kind of have to start by looking at what other amazing artists have done with dragons. Because dragons are all imaginative. There's no reality that you can observe. Or is there? Um... I guess the wings of bats, lizards have been observed, right? So kind of all of that. Oh, you rarely use reference. I'm used to it. I draw mostly dragons. Oh, okay. So you had a, you got a lot of mileage in drawing dragons. So that's good. And if you do it a bunch, you'll get, you know, it'll be a lot better. That's really kind of the answer to a lot of things. How do you get better at doing X, whatever that is? <laughs> Easy. Do it more. Do it often.
Oh, there's the four o'clock alarm. Let's zoom out, see what we got. Okay, so here we are. You know, the next stream, I will be done with those trees in the far background, and then we can really work on those palm fronds, which, you know, what's really interesting is how cartoony they look compared to everything else. So do you think a sky hole between the two trees on the right might add to the composition? I don't know. That's something we'll, we'll, we'll leave for the next stream. Four o'clock now. I gotta go, unfortunately. I would love to sit here and draw all day. But I just have so much to work on, Thinker. Hold that for tomorrow. What we can do, so that I remember, is do this. Just kind of pop in some kind of light back there real quick. And then zoom out and look at it. I could have put it on a different layer so I could turn it off on and off real quick. Mm, my initial thought is no, doesn't really add to it. Really kind of distracts away from it a little bit, honestly. So initial thought, no. Um, but, you know, this we're not done with this. We got a lot more streams left. The next stream, uh, we'll work on those palm fronts because those look really cartoony compared to everything in the background, which is a really good indication with the authenticity that I'm actually getting into the jungle back there. Uh, and the tiger's still standing out like crazy, literally. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this so far. We get those two palm, palm fronds in the back looking good, and then we can work on the tiger and maybe that last palm frond in the front bottom. Um, probably really need to work on that guy because it's looking pretty bare. Like, not much going on there. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Good luck on that dragon for us. If you can share it uh, on my website, chrisbevan.com, send me a contact information or whatever. Put a link in the description to this uh, um, live stream. Yeah, to, to your artwork. That would be wonderful. Same for you, Thinker. Yeah, share your, your stuff. It's not just about me about you guys as well and i will see you tomorrow thanks a lot